Okay. Hi, kids. It's uh, Saturday morning, about 10 o'clock. I'm not in the lab. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do four different reactions that I've chosen to kind of deal with this whole concept of Gibbs free energy, enthalpy, and entropy. Because it's a nice blend of some different reactions. Uh, three of which you've already seen. One of them will be a little bit new. So, ideally in the spirit of this lab, what would happen is that you would all run this reaction. You just make the observations, and then you predict the sign of enthalpy, entropy, and the sign of Gibbs free energy. That would be in the spirit of the lab. You all are here, you would do the labs, you run the lab, you make the observation, and then you'd actually figure this out. So that's how it's supposed to go. So I'm going to try and simulate that as best I can. So the first lab that you're going to do is I'm going over to the fuel hood over there, and I'm going to take 100 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid, and I'm going to add sodium bicarbonate to it. And we're going to make some observations. So one of the key things to keep in mind generally is, is general observation. Okay, this is a general observation. Is that your temperature change is going to be an indication of your enthalpy change. So if your temperature of the surroundings goes up, okay, that would indicate that it's an exothermic reaction and that you are releasing energy into the system and Mother Nature likes that. So you'd have a negative delta H if the temperature goes up. Okay? As a general rule, also in terms of your entropy, remember that gases generally have a lot more entropy than liquids or certainly solids. So if you see the production of a gas, that would tend to indicate that, oh, we're increasing the entropy because of the fact that we're producing a gas. So that's kind of your, your overall kind of general guidelines as, you, as we go through this lab. Look for production of gas and then measure the temperature. And again, if you look at our things that we can measure with LabQuest that we can plug in, we can measure pH, we can measure temperature, we can measure conductivity. We can do all of these things. But we cannot measure enthalpy directly, okay? We cannot have, we do not have an enthalpy probe. What we do is that we measure the temperature and change, temperature change it has on the surroundings. So if the temperature of the surroundings goes up, oh, hey, we're, we're releasing energy, we're going to have a negative delta H. Temperature goes down, we're going to have an endothermic reaction, and we're going to have a positive delta Okay, so those are going to kind of be the big general guidelines. So uh, when you get your this lab, I'm going to have like these initial observations and temperatures filled in. Okay, those will be filled in uh, the, the temperatures. You need to fill in like the general observations. So you kind of need to see what's going to happen in each lab. And, and this is going to be tough because I'm going to have to kind of zoom in and be cameraman and instructor all at the same time. But I think I can handle. So hopefully the video. Will so let's start with the first one. So then I'm going to change the camera just in order to get advanced. So I'm going to change this over here. And I'm going to give this a little bit of a zoom in. Okay. So Okay. So it's trying to mess with the blower. All right. So in here, I have 100 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. And the initial temperature is about 18 and a half degrees. So if we look at yonder lab quest, we're at about 18 and a half degrees. So that's going to be a key thing to watch. So what I'm going to begin to do is that I'm going to begin to store in baking soda, otherwise it's known as sodium carbonate. So Add some of this in, okay? And right away, you'll notice that we're getting some serious gas being produced in, okay? And the temperature is starting to go up. We're up to like 19, okay? 
And then I'm going to add some more. 19.6, 19 19.7. Okay. Oh, yeah, 20.2. So at this point, we're releasing a lot of energy. Okay. So up to 20.5. Adding. Adding. Oh, but something's happening now. Now the temperature is starting to drop. So now we're down to like 19.3, 19.2, okay, and 18.7, okay. Now we're down to like 15.5, 15.2, okay. And what's happening? Is that we're going to end up we're at 12.9. So if you could if you could be here, you could actually feel the side of this beaker, and it's very very cold actually. So what happens is that we initially release some energy in breaking some bonds. That's why that temperature went up. But now overall our temperatures are really dropping. So if I feel that side, that's what I said. If you were here, you could feel the side of this, and it would feel really really cold. So in this neutralization process, a bit more here. So in this process, see, no, I was set it at about eleven and a half. That was about it. So we went from eighteen and a half down to a bottom temperature of eleven and a half. So we that temperature dropped. So what that means is that overall, this reaction was very endothermic. And because if, if I consider my hand, I'd put my hand here, then I feel that. Oh, actually, now we're down to like 10.6, 10.5. Okay, we'll call it 18 and a half down to 10 and a half. Remember those numbers, 18 and a half, 10 and a half. So when I type them in, hopefully, oh, now we're down to 10. Oh, now we're, now we're down. Oh, we're down to single digits now. So now we're down to 9.2, 9.1, How low will it go? Seven and a half. It's like an auction in reverse. Can I get seven? Do I hear seven? Going once, going twice. Hey, bit a bit a bit of a bit. Oh, we're down to seven point two. Where will it stop? Oh, oh, we hit seven. Oh, I think that's where we we'll stop. Okay, so eighteen and a half, all the way down to. 7.0. So that was a pretty good reaction that took a lot of heat around away. And again, if you feel this, it feels really, really cold at this point. Okay. So now I'm going to change the camera position over here. So hopefully this thing doesn't fall off the lab stool as I'm moving it. That would be awkward. Okay. So now. Oh. Sorry about that. Over to part two of the reaction. Okay. So, all right, those of you can see this. So on the next part of the reaction, okay, so we've done the hydrochloric acid and sodium bicarbonate. Now we're gonna do the nitrite and the iodide. So what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna take 0.1 molar potassium iodide, okay? Milliliters of this, okay, and then we're going to add some 0.05 molar sodium nitrite, not nitrate, this is important, sodium nitrite, and we're going to add about an equal amount of that, 
Okay. And this one, I've already run. I've already run this, and I got the temperatures, and I don't remember what they are, but I'll, I'll have those on the left. So, note now. Notice on this. Notice that nothing has happened at this point. Okay. So we've mixed these together. Give it a stir. Nothing's going on. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of drops of three molar sulfuric acid. So now I'm going to overload this system and make it very acidic by adding a lot of hydronium ions to it. So hopefully this will show up on the camera. And when I do this, let me see if I can zoom in here. Okay, hopefully that stays in focus. Now I'm going to add the sulfuric acid to it. Now there's a couple of things that are important here. So we're forming a brown layer here, okay? So we form something that, that's dark in color. And I, I, you won't be able to see this on the camera, I don't think, maybe you will. But you're also seeing bubbles that are forming, okay? So we're forming some type of gas. So you kind of have a contrast here uh, in terms of perhaps your, your change in entropy. So you're forming bubbles, which would indicate that we're increasing that entropy. But at the same time, we form maybe, it's hard to tell, maybe it's a precipitate, maybe it's just like a change in color. But we definitely know that we have formed bubbles of gas. So we're here, okay, and the formed some type of brown layer, but we've also formed a lot of bubbles, okay? So those are the two things that you need to get out of this reaction. So we got a brown layer formed that settled to the bottom, and then we're forming some bubbles of gas. So on this one, so the initial temperature was like 20 degrees, and then it went up to 21 degrees. So we had a slight increase in the temperature of that one, okay? So temperature went up a little bit on that one. Not a whole lot, but the temperature went up just a little bit. Okay, so now, on the next one, I'm gonna do magnesium and hydrochloric acid. You all have done this before, but it's just kind of fun to do. So, uh, we'll take some, One molar hydrochloric acid. And we'll just give that a pour. Drop in the chunk of magnesium. So, clearly, we are generating an excess amount of gas, and the magnesium ions are dissolving. Okay, so because you're forming magnesium chloride, which is MG, magnesium ions, Mg2+, and a lot of gas. So you're going from solid into an ion, and then you're going, you're also producing a tremendous amount of gas, and if you feel the side of this, you can actually feel, in contrast to the first one, the sides of this test tube are actually very warm, okay? So this, is, this one is releasing a tremendous amount of heat. So this is a very exothermic reaction. So I've got an exothermic reaction. Energy is being given off. And I've got bubbles being released, okay? So I've got, I know I've got a negative delta H because it's, it's very exothermic. It's very, very hot, trust me on this one. And I'm also generating some hydrogen gas, okay? So that would maybe, lend us to thinking that maybe that entropy might be increasing because of the fact that I'm making that gas. Okay, so magnesium, hydrochloric acid, this is what you're going to put. Okay, so here's the last and final one. So I've got some beaker of water, okay? I'm going to add everybody's favorite indicator, or at least it's mine, a little phenolphthalein to it. Okay, so 
Since the solution is remaining clear, remember the phenolphthalein, it turns magenta in basic solutions. So this clearly is not a basic solution, it's just water, okay? So, but I have added the magenta to it. It's just clear. So the next thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna take a chunk of elemental sodium. Here we can't read it, but that's, that's what it is, okay? So we're gonna take a chunk of sodium. And no, we're not gonna jump the whole thing in there, okay? So we've got a little bit of sodium here. And shame we got a little bit off. Okay. And then I'm gonna duck that in. Okay. And you can hear it sizzling and it's getting hot okay so again i've got the temperatures i think this one went up by like one or two degrees so we had a little bit of sodium in here reacted with the water the color clearly turned or the color turned magenta so we got some hydroxide ions being produced it turned basic so here's what's happening with this one you had a solid chunk of sodium not very much entropy reacted with the water, we produced some hydroxide ions, and there was some gas being released as well, okay? So we got a gas, we got some ions, we had a solid, solid is no longer there, but it turned into nice, nice magenta. So as you guys go through this lab, okay, so, and again, I, I purposely picked these labs. Hold on, let me zoom out a little bit so I don't have to lean over. So I hope, this is the problem of me being the cameraman, I hope you all can just see, see every reaction that I just did. Uh, if you didn't, just take my word for it. So as you go through this, like I said, I picked these four reactions because of kind of a, a, its unique way of looking at Gibbs free energy, enthalpy, and entropy. Because it's like you can, you can do all the math, you can crunch the numbers, and you get those summations, but until you kind of visualize, oh, this is what this actually means, this is what a, a, you know, a positive, Enthalpy means, oh, this is endothermic with the, with the hydrochloric acid and the sodium bicarbonate. Oh, this is exothermic. Oh, that was the hydrochloric acid and the magnesium. They got really, really hot and we produced the, those, that hydrogen gas. So that's why I chose those reactions. So as you go through the lab, and the lab's going to take a while to go through because there's a whole bunch of calculations to do. So actually, I'm going to send this lab out on Monday. And the lab will be due on, well, I'll figure that out. I'll we'll see how the schedule goes. I'll see how long I think it takes. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, so hopefully you enjoyed the lab. There were some cool things that happened. I wish you all could have been here to actually do this lab in person. And uh, be safe.